Stories. Hello, welcome to today's podcast, the Oikos Family Ministry Podcast. I'm Sonia Wood, and I hope that you are going to enjoy today's little short story. I narrated a book a little while ago called The King's Daughter and Other Short Stories for Girls. And I thought, why not select a few of these short stories and put them in a podcast so that you can just listen to one little short story out of the King's Daughter, or more than one. I don't know how many I'm going to do. We'll just see how it goes. So that's what this podcast is about. It's about just giving you a short story to listen to in the hopes that it'll help you as the parent listening, or once you've listened to it, you might think of somebody that you think it could be valuable to. I hope so. Anyway, I think all of the stories in The King's Daughter and other short stories for girls are just so wonderful. They're old-fashioned and they have got rich morals and lessons of value. That's what I think. Um, That is why I narrated it and made it available for parents. In fact, I'm emphasizing parents even though there are short stories for girls and why not boys as well because... The way I see it is every one of the stories has something that we can learn from it, whether it be ourselves as adults or for our children. But the reason why I'm emphasizing the parent all the time is because my personal experience of these short stories was that I found them to be very, very helpful parenting tools, like, you know, a little little support to me, so that if one of the children was having a particular difficulty in an area, I would know about these stories and then I would read that story aloud to the children and then we would discuss it. So it kind of took whatever the problem or the difficulty might be out of it being a personal matter about themselves and we would then just discuss the people in the story that I had read to them and and what they faced and how they dealt with it. And then that would just, for me, my experience as a parent is I would see that that would um, just drop a few seeds in the heart of the child that was perhaps having that difficulty. And you know what happened, actually, is I read through all of these short stories, and of course I became familiar with them, so I would know by the title of the story for example, The Golden Windows. In fact, that's the story I'll share in today's podcast, The Golden Windows. Um, It's a very simple little story, but it gave us such um, a wonderful opportunity to be able to use that story as a reference for all kinds of circumstances that we faced in life, whereby maybe you thought things were greener on the other side. You know, the grass is green on the other side, that quote. Um, And so this story about the golden windows is relating to that story, you know, that uh, quote, the grass is green on the other side. So anyway, there's there's a little story. I'll, I'll put it in here after I'm finished chatting to you. And it's about that. And so we would use that story for other lessons throughout life as things happened in circumstances and as life changed and each one of the children were facing different things in their life. I would remember the golden window story from The King's Daughter and other short stories for girls. And then I would be able to either read it again or discuss it or talk about it. And just just to be reminded that the grass isn't always greener on the other side. And we need to look at what we have and count our blessings as, as I have emphasized in a lot of previous podcasts and videos and so on. So anyway, these short stories all have a lesson in them, whether it be for a daughter or a son, young or old, or um, parent or child, grandparent. I just found them to be of such great worth to us that what I've done is I've narrated the book and made it into an audiobook, and now I'd like to share one of the stories here today. Let's call today's one The Golden Windows because that's what I've been talking about, so we'll pop that in here. And I hope you enjoy it. I hope you will find it helpful to you. Thank you for listening and enjoy the story. The Golden Windows Oh dear, exclaimed Ruth impatiently as she put the library to rights. I do wish we could have a new carpet this spring. I never liked this one at all and now it's so faded and worn it simply is dreadful. It makes me miserable every time I look at it. Then, since you cannot very well have a new one just now, why do you look at it? asked Aunt Rachel, smiling. There are a great many unpleasant things in our lives, 
we find them every day, some of which we are unable to prevent. If we persist in thinking of them and keep fretting about them, we make ourselves and everybody about us miserable. It seems we might all learn a lesson from the bees. I have read that when anything objectionable that they are unable to remove gets into a hive, they set to work immediately to cover it all over with wax. They just shut it up in an airtight container and then forget all about it. Isn't that a wise way of us managing our vexations and troubles? Someone sent me a postcard the other day with this motto. The secret of happiness is not in doing what one likes, but in liking what one has to do. It is not in having and doing just as we like, but in being determined to make the best of the inevitable. When you find an unpleasant thing in your life that cannot be removed, learn to seal it up and forget about it. And then I think that many times it helps to get a different view of things. You remember the fable of the golden windows, do you not? A little boy who had very few pretty things in his own house because his parents were poor, used often to stand in his own doorway at sunset time and look longingly at the big house at the top of the hill, on the opposite hill. Such a wonderful house it was. Its windows were all of gold, which shone so bright that it often made his eyes blink to look at them. If only our house was as beautiful, he would say, I would not mind wearing patched clothes and having only bread and milk for supper. And then one afternoon his father told him he might do as he pleased, so he trudged down the hill from his house and up the other long hill. He was going to see the golden windows. But when he reached the top of the other hill, he stopped in dismay. His lips began to quiver, his eyes filled with tears. There were no golden windows there. Nothing but plain, common windows like his own. I thought you had beautiful golden windows in your house, he said to the little girl in the yard. Oh no, she said, our windows aren't worth looking at. But stand beside me and you will see a lovely house with truly golden windows. See? The little boy looked. Why, that is my house, he said, and I never knew we had golden windows. You see, much depends on your point of view. I have lived to be an old woman, my dear, and I have come to feel that the most heroic lives are lived by those who put their own vexations and troubles out of sight and strive by every means in their power to ease the burden of the world, who leave always behind them the influence of a brave, cheery, loving spirit.